Please explain purge suction high temperature. So I was kind of getting into this a little bit uh, with the previous question, but to go a little further. So if you're dealing with a high suction temperature on a purge unit, uh, what that particular unit is looking for is it's monitoring the refrigerant temperature or the, the, the suction line specifically coming back from the purge unit evaporator. And uh, actually a high temperature, if everything is okay, right? So if the purge unit is fully functional and accurate, then a high suction temperature is actually a good thing. That's what we want to see. That means that we have good heat exchange because the refrigerant coming from the condenser flowing through that purge evaporator is uh, adding a lot of heat to the purge unit's refrigerant circuit. So as it's able to add that heat, a lot of superheat is added and uh, that uh, condenser refrigerant is just condensing down into a liquid, the condenser gas to a liquid and then uh, gravity draining back into the condenser. Uh, so that is a that is a good good thing. Um, now there are some caveats to this. So one, if your purge unit circuit is having an issue, whether it be the uh, the metering device is not metering properly, the uh, say the condenser uh, coil or the condenser fan is having an issue, it's having a compressor issue. Basically, all the normal things you would have from a bad ref or refriger refrigeration circuit, right? Um, or if it's got, let's say, a low charge, right? Any of those things will can cause a underfeeding to the evaporator. And so if you're underfeeding the evaporator and you're not getting enough liquid in it, whether it's just not pumping enough through the compressor, we can't condense properly in the condenser for the, either the fan or the coils dirty, or the metering device issue, right? So those things can cause a high suction. So if you're having a lot of high pressure and surging issues in the chiller itself, and it acts like it has non-condensables, which again, this is a low pressure machine. So if you're dealing with that, but yet your purge system is acting like it's all good, right? It doesn't have a problem. It's not seeing those non-condensables in its evaporator. Well, then you get into the conversation of, okay, well, is this purge system even functioning properly? Uh, I've had it several times before where just somebody who just didn't know any better went in, hooked up to the purge unit on the chiller I was working on at some point, and there's such tiny charge in there that uh, unless you are uh, going to replace that charge or you're servicing that purge, don't hook up a gauge to it. Right. And so if you have to go as far as hooking up a gauge, just go ahead and plan to just start over. Um, because just hooking a even just a probe to it and taking it back off, that little bit of release can be enough on some of these purges to screw the whole thing. And so then it'll give you a low charge scenario. And I've had that happen before. Leak search the whole thing, the whole purge is perfectly fine otherwise. Give it a fresh charge and um does great no further issues from there right and it starts the the evap temperature starts to come down everything goes to work from there uh so it's just something to uh one of the things to consider right another a really common one though is the suction temperature sensor itself could be failed or could have failed so just be, be mindful of that, right? Verify that suction temp sensor, even if you take it off the line. Now, if it's one of those thread end styles where it's got the little uh, threaded nut, uh, those can be a pain. I've had those break a lot. Some guys have success with uh, just retapping the threads on that little uh, nut on the pipe. I personally have always kind of struggled with that. And But the problem is the replacement sensors, the temperature is in the very tip of the sensor where the threads are. So you can't just strap it to the pipe uh, thinking that's going to work very well because in my experience it hadn't. It usually reads a few degrees too high and it causes problems. So what I've had to do is, is literally like put the sensor at an angle but have the tip still touch the pipe and kind of zip it all together and then insulate it with really well. 
that's worked for me. Anyway, so yes, high uh, purge suction temperature could be um, these other conditions. But if you're not having surging issues, you're not having high pressure issues, and the purge is just running a high suction temperature, then you're, you're probably good, okay? Uh, it's cause to celebrate. You've, you're low on condensables, if any at all, and things are just jiving away. That's what we want to see. It's when this suction purge temp plummets, that's when we know we've got a problem. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, you all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 